Hello, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be transforming a piece of furniture with Mother Earth in mind all around. This video is in collaboration with several other YouTubers called Save the Planet. It was the idea of Marissa from Miss Flips. Our objective here is to transform a piece of furniture using the most eco-friendly way possible. So this is my piece I will be transforming in this video. This is a piece I found on Marketplace for $25. It's got a really cute shape to it, but it's not, I don't want to say it's bad quality. It is solid wood. Um, you know, it's not high end, but I have an idea to give it a high end look. Okay, so looking at the bottom, there's a little paint there too. There's how the legs are in. Not sure what this is. But it is solid wood. It is solid pine. We all know pine is not a bad wood, but it tends to be a soft wood. And it also tends to be a wood that doesn't stain very well. To make sure this paint was going to be removed and disposed of properly, I decided to go ahead and test it for lead using these lead test swabs, which I will leave the link in the description for. You just dip them in a little bit of white vinegar, rub them on the surface for 30 seconds, and they let you know whether or not lead is detected. None was detected, so we were good to go. One of the most eco-friendly ways to remove a thick painted finish uh, without a stripper is just scraping it. There is just so much controversy nowadays amongst chemical strippers and it would be an added step to have to remove it and dispose of that product. By scraping a finish you can remove several layers of paint really quickly and just toss it in the trash. I always end up finishing up with sandpaper and scraping a finish beforehand really reduces the amount of sandpaper you'll end up using which is also eco-friendly. Everything is stripped off. I have an interesting idea. <laughs> it's very eco-friendly. I've seen a lot of people um, adding wood to give a cool effect onto uh, pieces of furniture. And I think it's kind of a cool trend, but we're gonna put a little twist on it. I don't wanna go out and buy wood or order wood you know, perfectly cut into different shapes because um, I don't want to promote cutting down extra trees if necessary. So we're going to kind of do something along that line, but I'm going to use the most eco-friendly products I can. We're going to take a little trip now. Part of being eco-friendly is supporting small businesses which are doing their part to be as eco-friendly as possible. And I was really excited to visit this local business. It is a sawmill who has teamed up with a local tree trimming business. 
together they have created a really unique way to provide a variety of different wood species for local woodworkers without the environmental impact. So this little sawmill that I found locally deals with all local woods. They work in correlation with right next door there is a tree trimming business so all the trees that they trim off they mail into wonderful slabs and um, one of the owners here graciously said I can go ahead and rummage through this big old scrap pile which is essentially going to be turned into firewood for anything I need to use for my projects and I am super excited because look all these different types of wood here it was very generous of him these are going to be perfect for my little desk here we go when i first got here one of the owners was nice enough to give me a quick little tour of the facility and explain how things work i asked him how many different varieties of wood species do they get coming through here and he must have listed off at least 20 different varieties now I was super impressed because keep in mind all of these trees were cut down locally. The species may not be native but they were cut down locally. For one thing it is hot out here. It is 97 degrees today and I picked out a few really cool pieces so I'm gonna just take a few more minutes look through and jet. <laughs> this is the wood I was able to get for free. All different thicknesses of it. A lot of them are end cuts, things that they couldn't use. All this was going to be firewood. I think this might be walnut. Maybe. It has that hue. Um, this I think is probably pine. It's got a little bit of spalting in it, which is cool. Not sure what this is, but I love the green, almost like a tiger oak kind of thing. Um, they had a couple end slab pieces. I think he said they're not, they weren't thick enough for him to sell on a full slab. You see? So I got those. I have some cool cookies. Try to pick pieces which one side was flat. This one has some cool. The reason why I chose pieces that were already flat on one side is because it made it a lot easier for me to just square off the corners and turn them into um, perfect 90 degree angles. And that's basically all I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to flatten off the other side. I don't have a planer. I just needed to square them off and then sand them down on one surface so that it was good enough for me to not only glue onto my surface but also butt up with other pieces so they fit kind of snug. After I trimmed off as much of the usable parts of those scrap pieces as possible, I was then tasked with trying to figure out how to place them so that I didn't have any more waste. glue is going to be the only thing holding this thing together so I'm very generous with it. Lots and lots of wood glue. Here's the drawer. As you can see I sanded all the way around it to make it nice and smooth. 
so that when I put it back in the top, it's nice and flush. And the reason why I did that is because um, I wanted to be able to place other pieces of wood along the base without interfering with the drawer. So that's nice and smooth for now. And I got a bunch of different, you know, smaller pieces of wood. I'm gonna have to stack up all the way around. It's just gonna be an adult game of Tetra. When the sides were completely dry, I then trimmed off just the parts that were sticking above the top level so that I had a nice flat area to place the pieces that were going to be on the top. Oh my gosh, that took way longer than I ever thought it would take. I've been gluing all day just for this top. I use an entire bottle of glue. And now for the fun part, I've never ever carved wood, but I watched a lot of videos and knew I needed to get one of these awesome Cutsall Extreme Carving Discs. It had really great reviews. I made sure and had proper PPE and just gave it a try. How do you do this? Ooh. Wow, I was not expecting it to take off the material so fast, but um, it's kind of good. I think what I'm going to do is just go and try to make these pieces of wood even where they attached and then I'll let that decide what kind of shape we're going to get out of it.
Okay. The shape's looking really, really neat. <laughs> I'm starting to like it. But I, I have a lot of cracks right here. The wood didn't quite settle down. Yeah, so I'm going to have to fill that. And on the top, I had a lot more cracks. Especially like there. Um, before I grind any more, now that I am down to a level where I can hit, you know, both sides, I think I'm going to go ahead and wood fill all these cracks. So I don't have to go out and purchase any wood filler. I'm simply going to make my own by pouring a little bit of wood glue and then mixing in a little bit of sanding dust from my sander collection. This specific sanding dust is walnut, and I think a dark wood filler will look nice with all the different types of woods. Once the wood fill was completely dry, I went in again with my carving disc and ground down those areas where I had placed it. And also in the process, I just dug a little bit deeper to create some valleys and then also kind of went across some of the tops of those shapes to just make it look a little more organic and wavy. Close your eyes. Now that I got the deeper valleys, I'm going to go ahead and start sanding this thing down so it, I, it's nice and smooth, starting with 80 grit sandpaper. If I could, I would be right here with you. In this world of ticking clocks, I hope I'm getting through. Okay, so here it is, all sanded down with 80 grit sandpaper. It smooths out those curves quite a bit, but it's still 80 grit, so it's very rough, you can tell. What I'm going to do now is finish sanding with my Surf Prep sander. Although I was able to get into these curves, I couldn't get all the way down, as you can see. You should be able to get the rest with the Surf Prep. Smooth it all out, and then I'm excited to seal this thing up to see what it looks like. I decided to seal up this project with Odie's oil because it's 100% natural and it just makes raw wood glow. Thank you so much Angie from Transcend Furniture Gallery for turning me on to this product. A trick I learned from Angie is when you get the Merca Merlon pads to cut them up into smaller sections because you want to use this product very sparingly. You don't want to soak an entire pad into it and then have to just toss that you're wasting product. So one little piece, it ensures that you're not gonna overuse the product because once this soaks into the wood for about an hour, you wanna come back and buff off the excess. In continuing with the eco-friendly vibe, I'm using an old sock that doesn't have a friend. I have a little <laughs> basket I have in the laundry room where I keep socks that don't have pairs and I use them for staining and stuff like this. Because I wanted the legs to be a little bit darker, I decided to go with a dark brown paint wash instead of a stain. This paint is 100% natural, it's clay based, it's made about 50 miles away from where I live, and the owner of this paint actually ate an entire scoop of it. So I would say this is a 100% natural paint, it only has 9 ingredients, and it smells like dirt, it's awesome. 
to seal up those legs, I use the DIY Clear Wax. This is also another all natural product. It is very safe. Only five ingredients, six if you count love. Well guys, this little desk has taken quite the journey. Here's what it looked like when we first started. Thank you so much for coming along this furniture transformation with me. If you aren't already subscribed to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you would hit that little button. I have plenty other ideas wrapped up in this brain. I hope this video inspires someone to take a leap of faith when it comes to their creativity, because if you can dream it, you can make it happen. <laughs>